What's up, y'all? It has literally been forever since we've done a Residential Locksmith Starter Series video. So today we're going to continue on with the Baldwin section of that with passage and privacy images and estate tubular door locks. Now we're, re we're doing that because the last video that we did involved spindles. That's the bar that goes through the latch from the knob or lever to activate the latch when you turn the knob or lever. And I figured this will be a good follow-up before we get into the mortise lock section of this. This will not have any rekeying in it. And you might ask, why am I even needing to know this? Because when you get called out to rekey a doorknob or, or deadbolts on a house, the customer may have a passage lock on an exterior door that is heavily used that you notice is loose. So as a locksmith, you should be tightening it up for them. Or they could say, oh, hey, also I have a bathroom doorknob that's really loose. Can you tighten it up while you're here? You know those words. So today we're going to be looking at the two different main ones, the images and the estate, which use two totally different mounting styles and two totally different latches. I did a quick search on uh, the Flannery website. The, uh, they had the estate version latches still available. So the only thing that really ever goes wrong with these, because they are solid brass, is the screws will get loose, the lock itself mounting screws will get loose, or the latch will go bad, or just need lubrication. So in any of those cases, you may be faced with this on a residential job, Baldwin being on higher end houses, so you may actually end up having to go around and tighten literally every door on the house in some situations. Of course, you should be charging for this, but today we're gonna go over the two different mounting styles so you know how to take it off and treat it injuries so to speak so let's get started on that so that we can move on to the mortise locks for the next video we are gonna look up because a lot of times when you're dealing with these fellas you will be going in from underneath most of them have set screws that are supposed to be on the underside of the lock they're always supposed to be facing down with your spindle you've got four sides and it comes out at a diamond shape per se so the set screw will either be on one side or the other. So if we look underneath, and there will be either one or two of them. So if you look underneath, we'll see one for this one. This is the passage, has no locking function whatsoever. And then this one is the privacy. It's got a little pin right here on the inside that you push to lock the exterior knob. And when you turn the interior, technically it's supposed to open, but sometimes it doesn't. And it's supposed to do that as well, but sometimes it doesn't. But anyway, let's just assume that this is loose on the door, but I do want to show you the two mounting methods. We're going to grab our Eklund uh, 20912 with the Jason mod, as always. And this is one of the main reasons that we do have the Jason mod. Baldwin had a uh, an Allen wrench that they were sent out with that was kind of a square shape. It's you can always tell which one is the Baldwin Allen wrench because it's got a unique shape to it. But if you look underneath there, we can see we can see that Allen head screw right there, or hex or set screw, whatever you want to call it, grub screw. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this, put it in eighth inch, and undo it. Now you can see here, you can see how close it gets to the wood of the door and that is the number one reason right there see how close that is these come with that hex screw or a nut and uh it it can scratch up the door that's this is the main reason i always modded mine so there's a little bit more clearance for you to turn that when you're unscrewing these guys so sometimes they screw on like this screw style spindle right here they thread on but sometimes they just slip off. You know whether it screws on or slips on because the screw on style have two screws on the bottom and almost all of the slip on have just one screw. So once you get this one off, it, uh, it should pull straight out because being a passage lock, it has no lock. It's just got the straight spindle with no separation. But when you get to the privacy version of that, you are definitely going to have a split or a screw style spindle. You can see this one's on the other side. It all depends on which way you had put this on or the previous person had put on 
that spindle because ooh, on each on one side of the spindle there is a a groove or a cutout or a notch that that screw goes down into so it could be on either side it doesn't really matter which side as long as it's facing down if it's facing up a it's ugly and b it could get debris in the head of the screw and like you know hand goo and stuff like that so you always kind of want it facing down you can see these little divots right here and on the other side of them you have a a groove now one side or the other also does have a stop for the most part this one this one does not but if it won't come out you just have to take the other handle off and then take it out the other way sometimes they only one side will come out versus the other but you can see you can see how that goes in just like that and it's actually got these little scribe lines you know if you had a thicker door you would be stopping at that line a uh, thinner door you bit that line now that's not absolute by any means but and you can also see that this one is a swivel or well, i don't know what you want to call it screw type swivel spindle as well and if we took off the handle from this side you can see the other side has the groove so ideally when you're putting this back on having this groove gives you more flexibility really when you're putting this on the door you're supposed to this is how you're supposed to do it if it's a standard thickness door we would do this and then we would stop right there on that line and then tighten the knob down so that it falls down in that hole right and that that measurement is so when you put it back in it is lined up correctly now you won't you don't want this this way you want this side in line with the other side and you also want them facing down so in that case, we've got it lined up for a inch and three quarter thick door and we would slip it in. And ideally, if it's just your standard length door, by factory specifications, that's supposed to line it up correctly. Of course, with privacy locks, it has to be centered right on the door. Otherwise, it won't work when you do this button thing because it's off. So if you put it back on and the button one side doesn't unlock or it stays locked and that means the how you've got it through the door is either too far this way or too far that way and instead of engaging directly in the middle with the latch which has a split hub i'm gonna go ahead and take the latch out and i'll show you that you notice that it's not coming out that's because that little pin actually just screws directly into the latch so you do have to take this pin out see it's got a little screw threads there latch still doesn't come out that's because on the images versions of these the body of the mount itself right here this metal plate that these snap onto is actually holding it in it's actually a pretty novel solution because it totally protects the latch from uh, any you know interference now sometimes you can just reach in here and just pop those off just like that if it's really hard to pop off, you can push in these little tabs a little bit. Uh, and then once you're getting, gonna go back on the door, you would just spread those tabs open. Really, they just, they just snap on to the edges right there. You can see we did hit the side with the screws. If you open it up and there's no screws, then obviously you gotta take the other side off. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this guy and uh, check out the inside. If it's just loose, you really don't have to take it all the way off like this, but I'm going to show you how these are designed so you know all the way down to the, the guts of it. I don't know if these latches are still available, so if there's, if there's a latch that's broken, unless you can get like an aftermarket brand latch that happens to work for it, you may you know have to switch it out with something up to date. But we can see here, that this guy is uh, pretty corroded, number one, but it actually encapsulates, you know, is that a word? Uh, lever, there we go. There's also knob and lever versions of this latch. So the knob version turns both ways. The lever version only turns one way. So see how it totally kind of protects the body of that latch and holds it in? That's why you have to, uh, do what you have to do when you're putting it back on the door you need to make sure that hole is exposed for your privacy pin 
which is basically this little snappy thing right here. And we're gonna take off this other one and we'll see how it's built a little bit different. This is actually a really short latch compared to most, but that's how you get that apart. We're gonna go ahead and put that back on and uh, slip this through. It only goes together one way, so that's actually pretty easy to figure out right there. Hole on outside. Like just like that, just like that. We're gonna tighten it down, but we do need to tighten down the latch face first before we tighten this all the way down because it has to be totally in. So what we do in that case is just do that to hold it on and then tighten the latch in pretty much fully. Make sure don't over tighten it because that brass will bend in or you can squeeze it in too much, honestly if this mortise is deep it may not seem like it but it does rely on a good bit of uh, line up or has to be lined up pretty well for it to function smoothly i didn't show you the split hub on that latch when i had it out so i'll show it to you on the other one so i'm going to go ahead and tighten that down and at this point if you want to use blue loctite if it's a heavily heavily used door you may want to blue loctite those screws and also while you have that latch out you do want to give it a little hiss of uh, lubricant put your, put your hand on there and then, and then give it some lubricant right there and uh, we're going to take this again we want the set screw to be facing down so we're going to put it either this side or that side it doesn't really matter for the one but we want to make sure the groove is lined up so we're going to put it through just like this yep just like that we're gonna we we already spread the little tabs out there we're going to make sure that hole is on the right side and snap it on make sure it's snug just like that put this guy on again make sure those grooves are on the right side so here I uh, did not put it on right. Since we've got a lever and a knob, it's actually not on right because my screw's on this side and when I slipped it through, I had the groove on that side. So I actually need to take it and turn it 45 degrees there so that the groove is on this side so that that screw can tighten down correctly. One thing there might be, it, it wasn't too common on these, but it very well could have this little flat it's called a mylar washer. It's designed to kind of give it a little bit easier riding surface on this to that. Uh, but a lot of times they don't have them. They're not overly necessary, but they do help, especially if there's a little bit of a spacing issue as well. They do help that situation. So Baldwin set screws do come with Loctite already pre-installed on them, but if it's worn out, then you definitely want to take your blue Loctite and uh, and give it a give it a little squirt of it. So let's see here we've got an issue with it grabbing. So I'm gonna loosen that up and try to wiggle that off and turn it again. This one's actually a little hard to do because this handle normally on a door you don't have another handle directly on underneath it. So uh, give that a snug turn check it check it and then don't forget to put your little screw thing back in there tighten it down all the way and then you want to check the function of it okay push in locked unlocked locked unlocked there we go now on some lever latches it will only turn one way. This particular one turned both ways, but when we move over to the estate collection, we'll see that the lever latch only turns one direction. That's to support, they're built that way to support the weight of these bigger, heavier levers that you find because these are solid brass levers on Baldwin stuff. So lever latches and knob latches, knob turns both ways, levers only turn one way. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the estate and show you what I'm talking about there. Estate version here, we've got the privacy button on the outside. And, and we can see, we can see up here the passage version, the knob will turn. 
both ways that's because that's a knob latch but when you have a lever it only turns one way that's to support the weight of that lever and one of the big things about baldwin is they were so flexible if you wanted if you wanted one shape lever on one side and another shape or another color on another side baldwin was always one of those that was ideal for that because they sold all their stuff individually and if you wanted to buy you know if you wanted to have a funky house with two different colors or something like that baldwin was always a great go-to for that uh however uh, nowadays it's kind of hard you know on the stocking end of that so that's great for the consumer but not so great for the stocking distributor now these do use a entirely separate mechanism for uh attaching to the door where'd my hex wrench go speaking of hex wrenches this is the traditional shape of the common allen wrench or hex wrench and you see how the bald one is more squared off these are what was included so if you have a big old bin of allen wrenches and you find this funny shape one it's a little bit different that's the same size but you can see the difference there that means that is the bald one version of this wrench so you can just use it instead but again i like using my eckland to do this but we're going to go ahead and just use the baldwin version you can see it's a little bit awkward to do especially with the lever handle you just have to to turn quarter turn take out quarter turn take out and uh, eventually this will slip off just like the other one but when we get it off instead of those snap rings we will see Something pretty weird there. That is uh, a bracket that's used. Now we're gonna try to take this off and we can, oh, we got it the right first time. See now this one actually has these little stops. That's to stop it correctly in the latch so that it's centered correctly with that split hub. But we see, you know, that it looks like, what the heck is that? This is a Baldwin tool. Now I've got these in my truck, but if I was on a, a job and I, I was asked to do this, I would not go out to my truck to find this guy. And also it's pretty hard to carry this little weirdo piece of metal, but this is what it's for in case you have one and it says Baldwin on it. So you should know that it goes to a Baldwin lock of some kind. Plus they were just a little awkward to use. All right. Yeah. So that's, that's how you use that guy. Just like that. However, like I said, if I'm on a job and I just have to tighten up one of these, and if I, if I had a bunch of them to do, I'd definitely go out to my truck and get it. Uh, but, you know, compared to the other ones, it just goes on. Now, while I'm on this topic, one other mounting method that you're going to run across, these are all designed to cover 2 and an eighth inch standard bores. But back in the day before 2 and an eighth was popular, you may have had either a blank door to put this on or no, no nothing and instead of drilling a two and an eighth inch hole which wasn't necessary all you had to drill was like this half inch hole for the spindle to go through and it would use this style of mount it's attached to the door with three short screws that come with this and then it basically was just screws on just like this now obviously that's not the same or the same style but if we go back in the back we actually have different sizes this is an inch and three quarter diameter rosette or inch and a half i think but if you have instead of the that style of fastening you could actually have a screw on style not for the privacy because when you screw it on it's got to have the hole on one side or the other but there are bigger versions of these rings that would go on a mount like that. More often they're on a mount just like this over here, which is also a whole different style, but we don't see any screws. So we took off the wrong side of it, which is okay because I wanted to show you the way to take them off that most people that most likely you're gonna have to take them off because you may think when you get there that, you know, all hope is lost. I don't know what to do, uh, but it's pretty easy. Just grab a, just grab a flathead. All right, any thin flathead, nope, not, not the number two. Let's go back over here, a smaller flathead. We're gonna stick it in one side and push it in and then just start unscrewing. That's all there is to that. You don't have to do it from both sides. 
Nine times out of ten, it will start unthreading very easily. Also, nine times out of ten, just from being loose, is going to be loose on the door. So you shouldn't even have to worry about that period. So there we go. Take that off. And we have our screws. So let's go ahead and unscrew that and take a look at how that latch works compared to the other one that we looked at a second ago using the Husky 6-in-1, which is my preferred 6-in-1 driver when I'm actually using a 6-in-1 driver because it's so lightweight in the back and it's easy to do this and your the weight doesn't really make it hard to unscrew. So we can see there entirely different style of mount and in fact uses an entirely different style of latch. They are not cross compatible with each other. You have to have the specific latch for the other one because you saw how it fit in the, the mount itself. This latch would not work at all for that kind of mount because it will not go in there. So when you're putting these back in, you always want to make sure that one side has the, the measurement. This is a two and three eighths latch. If it was two and three quarter, it'd have two and three quarter. You want that to be facing up when you put it in. And of course you want the bevel to be facing the door so that when the door closes, it goes in. I actually just had a question about that in another video. Uh, one thing about these latches is the faceplate will come off. So you can order, really what I do a lot of the times is if somebody has a latch that goes bad. Now I have a back stock of these and I'll just keep them like this. You can actually turn it around so it fits either way. Doesn't really matter. But when you're putting the latch on faceplate, you see it has a flat. Obviously the flat has to go on the flat there and then those teeth just push in and turn. And, uh, and it's good to go. We can see our privacy function here has a little plastic doodad, whatever, washer on it. That limits it from going too far in because these do come with a privacy key. It's basically just a thing that goes through the hole and pushes it the other way if you're locked out of the door. And this plastic guide keeps it from going too far in and breaking or you yanking it out all the way. But you can see how much bigger this latch is, and you can also see how it kind of does fit into the mount, kind of, you know, exactly, exactly right. But uh, compared to the other one, we could have just, we could have taken it out without removing this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy back on, just like that. There's some... Uh, wordage you want the wordage always to be up so wordage up wordage up and as far as the privacy hole they actually had dual holes there so you didn't really have to worry about getting it dead on but it's always best to do with the bald one stuff you want the wording always go up whether it be the latch or the mounts or whatever they intended it to be seen because they're bald one they want their products seen, their name brand seen. So on almost all latches, you will see the Baldwin branding on it. So that is not lined up right. Let's loosen it. One thing about these is when you're putting them back on, like I said before, they do have to be fairly accurately done. I didn't show you the split hub of that, did I? I didn't. See how... See how there's that little line in there when you're using when you're using this latch see how it's got that split down the middle right there you can kind of barely see it that's because there's two independent parts that turn and that's why the privacy function actually works for that so we're going to make sure this is in we we'll make sure both sides are in yep just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and slip that in. And once again, tighten your latch down. Go ahead and get both your screws. Again, lock tight right there if you want to. Blue or purple only. Never use red for for pretty much locks. <laughs> locks period. Just don't use red. That's pretty much a no-no. So uh, again, on this one, you do have two grooves that go the full length of it. So normally what I will do in this case to make sure that it lines up correctly is go ahead and unscrew both of them. Just 
just like that. Let's back that out a little bit more. You actually see the red Loctite. I will say one thing about their red Loctite is it never, it never did what normal red Loctite is. You can you can easily unscrew it for the most part. So with lever handles, we need it to be the groove. We need it to be on this side. So we're going to make sure that they're both equal, just like that. Make sure they're both on the same side and on the inside here. So through, push it in until it stops. That way you know that's the measurement. See, this one looks almost a little too short, but what I'm going to do here is uh, go ahead and put this in. See how it kind of lined itself up right there? What that does is it provides a, uh, it just, it lines it up better. You can actually just slip your outside handle on as well. The, the best way to do it so that everything's kosher when you tighten these down. Let's just make sure, yep, yep. Okay, so again, take that off. Push it down all the way. Yep, just like that. Uh, we need to go ahead and put our rosette on. Which side do we want to do? Let's do this one. We want to make sure that the hole for it is on that side. And screw this guy down. Now, if you have a box of Baldwin, like if... If you're given a box of old hardware and they say, hey, put this on the door, there might be this guy in there. This is actually nothing but a guide washer for you to uh, line up the hole, kind of like we just did with the lever handle. So that is not a functioning part of the lock that is intended to be uh, thrown out once you're done installing it. So if you have a bunch of hardware inventory and you have those white plastic washers, you can be assured that it is not a necessary part of the lock function. It is only for the installation of said lock. Now, these are kind of ticky to get started sometimes, especially when you don't have the fancy little bald one tool to do it with. And uh, again, lubricant may help in this situation. No, no, looks like we're trying to cross thread. You don't want to cross thread it at all. That would be, that would be bad. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can get it started. Up oh, there we go. Just like that. Got it started and just use our flathead to tighten it down the rest of the way. Now, as always with the mount, it's a little bit harder. The door is going to hold still more so than this display mount that I have right here. There we go. I think that's tight. And uh, let's go with this. Actually, this is the one that goes with that. So this one should actually be on the other side let's let's do that just to make it look right let me switch them around and you know this is a display that sits up high up in my shop so really i'm the only one that would notice that but because because this actually faces this way and and this guy uh this guy matches that one so we're gonna we're gonna do this correctly I'll put that back on put this back in and i'll be right back got it tightening down a little snug and put our spindle back in the right way line up those guys as far as which side to put the stop on it's really dependent on the door especially like if it's a bathroom typically what i'll do is leave the leave the stop on the inside i don't know if that's right or not you know per baldwin's installation directions but in theory you know in theory if you uh had a doorknob come off say you're in the bathroom and the doorknob decides to come off if it came off if the stop was on the outside right okay so let's say this is the uh this is the inside of the bathroom and you, you pull the door closed and the knob comes off right Troop. 
uh, you, you don't have anything with you to turn that. And in fact, if it comes out, then you're, you're really, you know, out of luck and you're locked in the bathroom. I feel like if it was on the inside with the stop and it came off, uh, it wouldn't slip out because it, it won't let it slip out. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I don't know. Like, let me know what you think in the comments if you're familiar with Baldwin Hardware, which side you prefer to put the stop side of it on. It doesn't really matter again. Uh, but what does matter is having the other mechanism right there. And once again, we're just, since we have it, we'll use the actual Baldwin thing for this, which you can't do it with the lever there. So we'll take that back out and, uh, and tighten this down. Totally could use a screwdriver for this. We're just gonna use this because it does damage it a little less and makes it a little equal. Tighten that down. In fact, even with those, sometimes I still come in and give it a little snug up right there. That didn't work real well, but you get the idea. All right, we're gonna put this guy back in just like that. All right, and this guy. All right, before I tighten it down, I do want to attach the privacy doodad. The doodad, I don't know if, I think it may have been on the other side though. Yeah, it was. The other side had, uh, it was pretty much capped off, so we're just gonna screw this guy in to its hole there. I guess I have to get the phone. Which side was that? Yep. Okay. All right there. I couldn't remember where I was. Let's grab the Allen wrench and tighten the outside down. Uh, typically, I'll like grab both sides just like that and kind of squeeze them together. Uh, I tell people frequently that it's uh, they're you know I'm like okay now just so you know when I leave here it's going to be loose tight or tight loose however you want to word it. And they're like, what? I'm like, it may seem loose. You know, it may have a little bit of in and out or a little bit of wobble, but in actuality, that's just how antique locks are. Because if they're super tight, the latch won't withdraw. So if we had that on there and it was too tight together, like if we put a clamp on here and squeezed it together, tighten that down, when you turn it, the latch won't come back out. That means that it's either not lined up right or it's just too tight that way or something's interfering with the whole system. So in actuality, a lot of antiques are tight, but they feel, you know, kind of loose. Also, Baldwin did have that emergency key. You don't necessarily need the emergency key to get into it if it's locked. Oh, other side. So locked, you can actually use literally anything that'll poke in the hole to unlock it. I'll show you the emergency key. Just so if you ever run across one, you know what it's for. This is the typical, and they, they are straight and angled. Angled is just to make it easier to undo. So uh, really, it's just a boop, boop, boop. That's all That's all that does. It's just a, a fancy version. Again, it could be straight. It could be angled like this. They did it angled just to make it a little bit easier to boop. Anyway. That's it on that. The only other one that you might run across is this guy. I don't know whether it was estate or images, uh, but typically it uses this estate style latch. But I will show you this version of it that very commonly used the screw on style of rosettes. Just like that. They screw on, obviously, the full size, the bigger versions. But just in case you run across one and you're like, Jason, you didn't show me this version. Where'd this come from? This is just another another version of pretty much the same thing. Uses the same latch, just like that. So either or could be, if you have the knobs that screw on to the spindle, it will have two set screws instead of just one set screw. All the ones we looked at today only had the one set screw. But if you have a knob and it screws on physically screws on with the threads just like this you see it has two now you're going to find these more on the interior trim 
of mortise locks and mortise locks themselves. That is typically where you're gonna find the threaded versions of these. Almost all the passage and privacy uh, used the straight style non-threaded spindles and these were on mortise locks. But since Baldwin was so party, you know, oh, we'll, just, we'll just use this part for this instead of that, uh, then you, you could also run across the same thing. And typically what I'll do in this situation is these have a stop as well. So I'll tighten it, push it in, push it in until it stops. I'm gonna hold it on one side as I tighten this down. And as I tighten it down on the door, as soon as I feel it tighten down and the screws are in the proper position, which would be one down, the other down. As soon as you feel it start pulling back, you need to stop and put the other side on and then individually tweak each knob until it's on the right. Both knobs are facing down as far as the screws go. So that, in case you run across that style of mount, this one is out there as well, just so you know. A little bit different. Still can be used for privacy or passage either one and typically always just screws on maybe really tight on the door you know if it's painted on and it hadn't been off in years sometimes it's really hard to get that guy to break free so just fyi just so you know what you might be facing when you get called out to rekey a house and you notice a decorative handle that may be loose and you don't you know you're kind of worried about it painters have always had traditionally a lot of trouble with Baldwin. In fact, nowadays, most of them have had issues with a Baldwin lock, and that's why we get more calls from painters or homeowners that are saying, hey, my painter won't do this, or hey, my painter did this, and now I can't, he, he doesn't know how to get it back on. Number one thing with painters nowadays is if they haven't done it yet, they will do it and not be able to get it back on, and typically the homeowner gets irritated and makes them cover it. So almost always they say, now you have to have somebody come take this hardware off, which is actually for the better. And it's also good so that you have this knowledge in case you get that call where somebody took all off and you have all these parts and pieces. Now you know how to get that passenger privacy lock back on the door. Next time we're gonna talk about the mortise locks. Finally, uh, we're gonna go over that. We've done numerous videos on taking these guys apart. Uh, but we're going to do it one more time for this series, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully it won't take forever like it's already taken forever to get this video out. Make sure and hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see it when it pops up. We appreciate y'all watching. Catch you next video.